I woke up after five hours of sleep thinking about my project last night. And I just couldn't get it out of my head. And I was thinking, here's this campfire that I made. Complete with a nice little neat swinging pot and all that. Nice little campfire. And I woke up thinking to myself, I could do better. Oh my God, this is gonna suck. So uh, I started with some foam core and cut it roughly uh, one and a half inches wide by three inches long and that was my starting point for how I wanted my base to be. my craft knife and then uh, beveled the edges. Trim the corners with a pair of scissors to give it more of a, a less uh, square appearance. And finally I came in and sanded it up with some uh, with an emery board. I took some of my dark brown and uh, painted along the edges. I'm going to add some texture paste to this later, but I wanted the edges of my board to be the same uh, dark brown. I didn't want to put the texture paste all the way on the end. I decided to preemptively uh, help the piece not to curl, so I decided to paint the bottom with some of the black Mod Podge. It worked perfectly and none of the pieces ended up uh, warping. And we, uh, I just decided to add some of my uh, brown texture paste as used in my uh, previous video. And now for the pot holder um, slash uh, rack, I'm just using some black jewelry wire that I'm curling two pieces at the top these pieces are about two, two and a half inches long, and I'm just curling the top part. Uh, they're kind of shaped like a nail. They have a flat portion and then the long portion. And I'm just curling the long portion and leaving the flat nail portion for the base. I need two of these, and then I need one that's got a dip in the middle to hold the pot. Which is what I'm doing here. The, uh, the pot here, which is just a Hearst Arts cauldron uh, with some uh, with a bale on it, like in the uh, like I did with the bucket in the well video. Refer to that video for uh, the technique that I use. Now I'm laying down some uh, some tacky glue and sprinkling some cat litter on to give the simulation of the ash in the center of the fire pit. Then I'm going to go around the outside with more of the tacky glue and put down some rocks to finalize the fire pit. I'm just choosing some small pebbles here, not really uh, wanting to use anything too big. I'm trying to keep it mostly to scale.
then I'm going to come back in with more cat litter to fill in the gaps. This step is optional, you don't really need to do it, but I felt like it would, uh, it would help things a little bit without having big pieces of glue sticking out. I'm going to put a couple of dabs of glue on the outside. This, this part was the most difficult part of this build, and um, if I were doing it now after watching it and uh, after having been on the other side of it, I probably would have just used hot glue and been done with it. But I wanted to use the PVA so there wouldn't be any annoying pieces sticking up. But that made this process very annoying. As you can see, I had a very hard time getting it to stand up. And a little bit later, you'll see it actually fell apart before it was even completely dry. I had to leave it overnight in order to get it to dry fully. After it dried, however, it was perfectly sturdy. See, I knocked it over here to reset it. I was just getting ready to do my dry brushing. What I would have done differently is I would have done the dry brushing first and then come back in and put this on at the very, the very, very end after I had the grass on and everything. In that case, I guess I wouldn't have used hot glue because that would have been disturbing the ugly. I just have a, a few small Hearst Arts pieces here. Um, the fire, the fire pit, uh, uh, two logs laying over each other with the fire sticking up, and a couple of uh, pots, vases. You see, I have a log there that I'm going to paint to put on the side. I'm just painting these up uh, simply, just using some basic colors and uh, a bit of a brown wash. This is a khaki color. I use a mocha, uh, a light brown, and a dark brown on all of these pieces. The top portion didn't want to sit still and I figured it would give it more rigidity if I added some super glue gel to the ends. In the end this gave me um, some, it frosted a little bit so there, it's a little noticeable but it doesn't take away from the piece I feel. Now I'm just coming in with some white PVA glue and gluing down all my small bits after they've been thoroughly dried. I painted the fire up uh, using a uh, pretty simple technique of basing it in yellow dry brushing on an orange and wet blending in a red with it and then I dusted the tips with black to simulate smoke. It worked out very well and I'll be definitely be using the technique again. I made a template to use for the tents, and I, I put some uh, canvas uh, texture on it, but I decided to use an old t-shirt covered in uh, Mod Podge, which worked out way better. So I, I took a piece of old t-shirt material and traced out my pattern. I'll put a link to the pattern in the description below if you want to use it for your own tents. But it's, pretty a, simple, it's a pretty simple design. I made this triangle to uh, cut my frame pieces to length without having to measure each of them um, with a ruler, and that worked out very well. And then I just hot glued these together. It was the simplest way. I could have used uh, PVA or uh, super glue to do it. I, at this point, I was in a bit of a hurry, and I didn't really relish the thought of um, holding these things still while they dried like I did with the fire pit. So I'm just making a couple more bases, roughly the same size as the fire pit base. A little wider, I think these are two inches wide by three inches long, as opposed to one and a half inches wide by three inches long. I made two of the tent frames like you see here in the photo and then I made one that was a little bit different for a little bit of variation. 
I like looking up uh, photos of things on Google Image Search and getting references for how things should look and trying to mimic them as close as I can. So I looked up pictures of tent frames, and medieval tents and Civil War tents. And this is what I came up with, just using barbecue skewers, gluing them closer to the back of the, the base so that I could put a, a stake in the front, just like the, uh, the terrain tutor does in his uh, army tents when he makes his. After I put on the basing material and the, uh, the flock, you can't notice the hot glue there. These uh, central posts, I've actually poked them into the foam core and rested them uh, underneath the frame for uh, stability's sake. and in the back to give me a place to glue my uh, tent flaps. Here you can see the different frame that I made. And those stakes are just the tip of uh, barbecue skewers. You could use uh, the tips of uh, rounded toothpicks too, and that would work just as well. And I'm gonna just repeat the same process for basing these that I did with the fire pit. Paint the borders in, a, in a brown and the frame in dark brown and then dry brush everything with a, a, a khaki after I put on the, uh, the basic material. I don't know why I painted the whole piece here as opposed to just the edge. I was going to cover it with this paste anyway. It didn't make much sense. I did. putting some basing glue on my fire pit base and I'm adding some grass. This is actually the order I did all of this in. While the, these bases were drying, I was doing the basing on the fire pit. And while that was drying, I was doing these. And I was bouncing back and forth between the two pieces quite a bit. Now to enable some of that ground texture to show through, I didn't put the grass and the basing glue all over the whole thing. I just did spots, and I thought that that was far more realistic given that somebody would be staying in these tents and presumably digging up the earth as they move around and possibly even a long-term camp situation. I'm just taking some white thread here and uh, tying it to the stake and then gluing it to both the stake and the frame to give the illusion of a, uh, of a tent pulse uh, tie out. Next, I'm just gonna use some super glue to glue my uh, t-shirt material cutouts to the, the tent poles. Just one, uh, one little section at a time. I didn't want to get too far ahead of myself. I wanted to stretch it over the whole frame and to do that I had to go slowly and do one section. So I started with getting it centered first on top and then I curled around the flaps to the outside poles. That gave it a nice sag in the center to make it look like it was resting on the poles because it was resting on the poles.
can absolutely do this with paper if you want to use the template uh, as is. You can totally do it with cardstock or with paper. It's up to you. I found sometimes making thick canvas you can actually cut out an 8.5 by 11 sheet of brown paper bag and if you have an inkjet it, uh, it actually prints pretty well on the uh, brown paper bag because it's, it's uh, super porous. I don't know if it would work with a laser jet because I don't have one. I know, I know for a fact that it works with my inkjet as long as the paper size is correct. And now I'm going to make up a, uh, a wash of uh, a khaki. And I really didn't get this correct the first time. Here, I think you're watching the second uh, iteration of it. It was way too thin the first time. This time I wanted it to be mostly glue and just a little bit of water um, to help set up the cloth. And after it dries thoroughly, the cloth becomes uh, still kind of, it's flexible, but it is uh, rigid and it holds its shape really well. And I just, uh, I tested it on a piece of scrap cloth before I went to work on it. And it absorbs it, you can see, really well, even if it's just a really thin wash. It's just glue, uh, a bit of water, and um, the paint, very, and very little paint at that. And here you have the completed camp. And, uh, it, looks, it looks really nice, and I'm very happy with how it came out. Um, you can see the pot there uh, and the jugs all around the, uh, the campfire. Hey folks, thanks for sticking around. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you're not already one of my minions. Also post in the comments below. I'd love to hear about what you would have done differently, if anything. Any comments or questions are welcome if it helps me do a better job bringing you quality content. Also check out my Instagram page, linked in the description below. I post all kinds of things exclusive to that platform. And I've created an Amazon affiliate link. You shop as normal and I get a small cut of the sale. How cool is that? It's a lot of info, I know. Bear with me while I find my groove. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you around the table. Bye for now.